This is part 20 of ASP.NET Web API tutorial. In this video and in a few upcoming videos, we'll discuss step by step how to implement token based authentication in ASP.NET Web API using OWEN middleware and identity framework. OWEN stands for Open Web Interface for .NET. We'll discuss more about OWEN middleware in a later video. So here's what we want to do. We are going to make use of this employees table on the left in this demo. We want to retrieve data from this table and display it on a web page only for authenticated users as you can see right here. In addition, we also want to provide a registration page using which new users can register with our site. Once registered, they can use those registered credentials to log into our site and see the employee's data. Our registration page should look like this. We need three pieces of information from a new user to register with our site. We need their email address, password and confirm password. Now let's try to register using this email address goodvenkert at gmail.com. Let's provide a password and confirm password. Let's click the register button. Notice we are getting a validation error. I've already registered using this email address and that's the reason why we are getting this error. Goodvenkert at gmail.com is already taken. We can dismiss this validation error by clicking this little cross right here. Now, if I use a different email address, goodwink at 10 at gmail.com, and when I click register, notice we get registration successful. When I click close on this, it automatically redirects me to login page, and now I can use the email address using which I have just registered and login to our site. So now I'm redirected to data.html. The system knows I'm logged in, and that's the reason why it displays this log off button here. We have load employees button. When I click on this button, we get the data from the employees table. Now at this point, if I navigate to register.html, and then if I come back to data.html, it still knows I'm logged in and it takes me to the data page. We have the log off button. We also have the load employees button. Now, when I click log off, I'm logged off and it automatically redirects me to the login page. At this point, if I try to go to data.html page, look at that, it automatically redirects me to the login page because I'm not logged in. And if I try to provide an invalid username and password, it displays a validation error. The username or password is incorrect. So we need to implement these three pages, registration page, login page, and data page. Now we are going to make use of Oven middleware and identity framework to achieve this. In addition to Oven middleware and identity framework, we'll be using a few other technologies. We'll be using ASP.NET Web API, ADO.NET Entity Framework, SQL Server, Bootstrap, and jQuery. If you're new to any of these technologies, please watch the respective playlist from our YouTube channel. And here is the link to our YouTube channel where you can find all the playlists. I'll have this link available in the description of this video. So the first step here is to create the employees table and populate it with test data. I have the SQL script for that right here. I've already executed the script. I'll have it available on my blog in case you need it. So when we select data from the employees table, we get all the test data. The next step is to create the web API service, which is going to retrieve data from this employees table. So let's flip to Visual Studio now. In Visual Studio, click on File, New, Project, under Visual C Sharp, select Web, ASP.NET Web Application, and let's name our project Employee Service. Click OK. On this screen, select Web API and set authentication to individual user accounts. If this is set to anything else, click Change Authentication button. This shows us all the different authentication options that we have. So make sure you select Individual User Accounts and click OK. The Individual User Accounts option uses membership database. The new users that we register with our application will be stored in that membership database. We'll discuss more about the membership database in a later video in this 
this series. So at this point, click OK. This is going to take a few seconds to create our web API project. There we go. The project is created. Now let's add ADU.NET Entity Data Model, which is going to retrieve data from the Employees table. So let's right click on our Employee Service Project, Add New Item, select Data, ADU.NET Entity Data Model, let's name our data model, Employee Data Model, click Add. We want to generate the model from the database, so select Entity Framework Designer from Database and click Next. We want a new connection, so let's click the New Connection button. We will be connecting to SQL Server on my local machine, so the server name is going to be dot. And then from this drop down list, select Employee DB Database, which has got our employees table. And let's click on Test Connection. Test Connection succeeded. Click OK. And now let's click Next. This screen is going to show us all the tables, views, and stored procedures that we have in our employee DB database. So we want this employees table. Click Finish. This is going to generate the ADO.NET entity data model for us. The next step is to add employees controller. So let's right click on the controllers folder, add controller, select empty web API to controller, and then click add. Let's name our controller, employees controller, and click add. This is going to add employees controller. Within our employees controller, we are going to have a single public method, which is going to return us I enumerable of employee objects. Now if you're wondering where this employee object is coming from, it's coming from our ADO.NET Entity Framework. The employee data model that we have just created has got the employee entity right here. So we are returning I enumerable of employee objects from this method. This method is going to respond to a get request. So let's name this get. Now, we are going to create an instance of employee DB entities. So this is the database context class, which is going to help us connect to the database and retrieve employee entities. So let's create an instance of this class using employee DB entities. Let's call this entities equals new employee DB entities. And then all we want to do here is return the list of employee objects. Let's run our project now by pressing Control F5. We are on the home page right now. Let's navigate to slash API slash employees. Notice we see the list of employees. At the moment, this request is not authenticated, but we are still able to see the list of employees. That's not what we want. We want only the authenticated users to be able to see the list of employees. So let's flip to Visual Studio and decorate our employees controller with authorize attribute. Let's give our solution a build. And when we reload this page, notice we get authorization has been denied for this request. Since the employees controller is decorated with authorized attribute, all the actions within this employees controller need to be authenticated. Otherwise, we get this 401 error. Authorization has been denied for this request. In our next video, we'll discuss implementing new user registration page. Once a user has registered with our application, he will be able to log in and view the employee's data. Thank you for listening and have a great day.